welcome to the Great Nerd Debate. I'm Chad. This is Chris, your host of the show. And today we have Keith and AJ. Say hi, fellers. What's up, fellers? I taste blood. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. Oh, I thought so. Isn't that what we were going for? Sharply. Like, serious tone? Like, um, what? They're like, I'm going to tear the throats out of my enemy. <laughs> welcome to <laughs> F- Miller's Nerd Debate. <laughs> today we're going to be debating yeah. what mm-hmm. is the best video game movie. And guess what? Nobody chose Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter. What the fuck? Because we want to keep things interesting. Wasn't wasn't in the cards, Chadley. Wow. Yeah. (laughs) Deal with it. No one picked 2006's Doom starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson? No, I want to win. (laughs) I know, right. Exactly. That was my thought process. I prefer to win. I already lost once. I need to make up for that, all right? This is the loser's bracket, by the way. This is true. I want to be the winner of the losers. And if you follow the logic... (laughs) It means you're the real one. <laughs> right? Exactly. So just, what game? I'll what just movie hold it up like I this choose? the whole time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. AJ, what movie yes. did you pick? I have chosen the legendary Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Legendary, maybe, but definitely controversial. Sonic, Sonic is mm, legendary. Very, Without a doubt. Very, uh, controversial, uh, yes. Um, <laughs> Keither, what did you pick? Keither. I chose the amazing Ratchet and Clank movie based off of the games i hope it's based off the games or else you're gonna have some trouble i know right <laughs> obviously somebody was following the rules so he chose yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i chose the game that follows the rules <laughs> <laughs> all right the way round one works you each have an opening statement to explain why your game is great game movie game movie thank you exactly. and we're gonna roll the dice see who goes first. So Keith. Yo. Odds or evens. <laughs> Odds. Hey, guess what, AJ? You're going first. If you yeah. no, he has you can defer to go second. Yeah. You won the coin toss. Oh, I won the coin toss, so I can defer to go second? Yeah. Good. I get I defer to go second. Good luck. Okay. All right, here we go. Right. Sir Keith or Maximus, you have yes. three minutes. Tell us why your video game movie is the best. Got it. Starting now. What the? All right. So Ratchet and Clank, the movie is based off of the uh, 2016 game of the same name as well, which is also a remake of the 2002 game, which is the first Ratchet and Clank in the series. Um, This game is entirely made up in-house within Sony. It's a Sony Originals movie. It's made up with um, a lot of the writing, the screenplay, the animation that you know and love from um, Insomniac games. Um, it's got a, a lot of the original soundtrack, a lot of the same fucking voice actors from the original games. I mean, how much better can you get than that, really? Um, you also have um, another, you know, other stellar cast like Sylvester Stallone. You got John Goodman, Paul Giamatti, Rose, Rosario Dawson. How can you fucking turn that shit down? Um I mean, it just keeps the same vibe of the games the entire way through. It's got the same comedy, humor. It's got even got a fucking Wilhelm scream for fuck's sake. uh, (laughs) I would, yeah, I get a (laughs) different for that one. (laughs) Animation, you got the world design, music, crazy weapon names, exactly from the game, the gadgets, you got the combat. I mean, it's a complete reimagining and retelling of the of the very first game in this series. Okay. Okay. You defer a minute, 36 seconds. Oh, I have more time? Okay. <laughs> like the opening. Uh, <laughs> opening two minutes. Yeah, opening should be shorter. So am I, okay. Well, it basically follows uh, Ratchet and Clank hey. on their journey. Hey. What? Whoa. What? Huh? What? You can't say, hey, you. dude, defer your time, stop the clock, and then yell at them when they start talking. <laughs> Like, what the fuck, man? We, we said two minutes, and that's two minutes. Okay. All right. That's fine. Okay. I think I said what I needed to say. Do you guys see what I struggle with? Why yeah, struggle? it's struggle's real. <laughs> struggles. <laughs> hey, I mean, guess what? <clears throat> yep. It's your turn. You have Love you, buddy. two minutes starting now. All right. So the the thing that uh, that we're talking about is a great video game movie now video game movies or uh, adaptations have struggled for over 20 years to actually be halfway decent right there are a limited amount of 
movies that are great uh, movie adaptations, Ratchet and Clank is just not one of them. And I actually have the stats to prove it. So the opening weekend of Ratchet and Clank only brought in 4.8 million. The opening weekend of Sonic brought in 57 million. Globally, Sonic brought in over 300 million in its total. Globally, Ratchet and Clank brought in 14 million. So not only does your movie smell like poopy, but the rest of the world agrees with me <laughs> that it was terrible. Take now, news. who's also more who's Sorry. also more iconic? Ratchet and Clank, where video gamers such as us would actually really recognize him, or people who don't even play video games and a character who's been around for 30 years, who's known globally, who's going to be more excited to watch that? Mm. I'm going to go with Sonic. So unfortunately with that, you're kind of being on that as well. You also wow. mentioned that if there was an all-star cast, just because you have an all-star cast doesn't make it a good movie. There's plenty of good movies out there with all-star casts that, no, excuse me, plenty of movies with all-star casts that suck. This is one of them. And the 3D graphics is totally CGI. We have Sonic the Hedgehog here that has a uh, practical CGI and it also has Jim Carrey, only one fantastic mm. actor needed for this, not a whole entire plethora of actors. We're also gonna be going based off of how the story arc goes. They don't actually go into the video game universe. They bring the video game universe into the real world. So to actually keep on a nice, easy playing field nothing crazy nothing where anyone's going to be pissed off because you didn't do the video game justice they brought a video game character to the world where they can actually come up with a halfway decent buddy film and that's what sonic the hedgehog did time <laughs> that's a good fresh round thank you thank yeah. you it's actually pretty good between both of you keith don't don't think yourself down right now <laughs> I feel pretty good about this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So guess what? Say what? What? Round what? two. You guys get to go against each other's opening statements. Yes. And guess what else? AJ, you get yes. to go first. Oh. And you have first. two minutes for this one. <clears throat> you ready? Yes, sir. Time's us now. So to go back to the opening statement of what you had made, right? So we're going to be going and readdressing that it was a full star cast. So full star cast can, again, you know, either be A, really good, or B, to the detriment. You can bring in a lot of people because of, the, uh, because of the cast or not so much. The numbers don't lie. Not that many people are interested. So you can have Oprah Winfrey. You could have, you know, <laughs> David, uh, you know, Blaine, and you can have all these other characters as much as you want. People weren't interested and the numbers show. So obviously having an all-star cast didn't mean diddly squat for, uh, you know, to have this be a really good movie. Uh, also for the, uh, you also had made mention of it being, you know, attached to the video game roots. A lot of times, you know, when it's attached to the video game roots, arguably, arguably, is that really a good movie? So why is it a good movie? Because it's like the video game. I might as well just play the video game. They came out with the video game before the movie even came out. I played the video game and I liked the video game more than I liked the movie. Also, it was spoilers. So you have the video game telling you what's going to be in the movie. That was absolutely a terrible decision. Why would you do that? So I enjoyed playing the video game. You have a lot of big guns that go boom. I'd rather be playing and shooting the big guns that go boom, not watching anybody that not that many people really cared about, you know, making all these booms and everything else with the full star, you know, cast and everything else like that. Uh, mm. Also to realistically, again, just, just drive the point home though, there was a total loss on Ratchet and Clank. <laughs> they didn't even make their money back. I think it was actually about a $10 million loss. So we're looking at uh, their budget was $20 million. They grossed globally 14. So they're easily down $6 million. The budget for Sonic was about 90 million. Right, we'll say 95 million. It grows to 300 million plus, my guy. So that means that right off the bat, again, everybody was more in, like, you know, psyched. Whoa. Boom. Oh. All that was Chad's dad's voice, right? Ooh. Did you hear that? Ooh, time. can I hear that again one more time? One more time. Time? Yo, uh, no, nah, you went up last time. It was more basic. Yeah, that wasn't. Oh, it was turned yeah. on before. Oh, now I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, best shut the fuck up now. Oh, all right. <laughs> Make me get the belt. Hey, guess what, Keith? Yeah. He just got a lot of points on that round. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. How did Keith get points for not talking? I said AJ. <laughs> Did it's I? my good. It's my uh -huh. good looks. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, to be honest with you, I would too. It's like, all right, two points for AJ, one for Keith. Keith gets a coin for the, he gets a coin for the mustache. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Keith no. starts with one point every. <laughs> <laughs> Just right off the bat, you get a point if you can spell your name off. right. <laughs> no, AJ actually brought up a lot of good points that round. That was uh, okay. You don't think so? Mm. I think he brought up some points. You think they're good? Mm -hmm. I didn't say that. I said they're. Ooh. I think Ooh. they're perfect for a debate. You know what's perfect for a debate? Keith going. Yeah. And guess what, Keith? I'm ready. You have two minutes. I'm starting now. Okay, let's start off. You say that it made three hundred million, but did you mention how many people walked out of the theaters during that? You don't know that, and you didn't specify either. That's so true. I'm going to assume that. Uh, it's not it's not just the greatest movie really um in the beginning they try to get you into nostalgia by showing off the original game which the movie looks nothing like it to be completely honest and they almost fucked it up by the look of sonic how hideous he was in the beginning and took six months to try and fix that and and oh did i also mention the guy who designed him was the original designer of sonic who fucked up his own creation that's pretty fucking bad um, also, they villainize a beautiful man with a mustache. That was fucked up, too, on their part. <laughs> um, he also, Sonic encourages not going to school. He didn't go to school, so he's telling kids not to go to school. He incites violence by starting a bar fight with these guys for no odd reason. Um, it's just, he scared the shit out of a turtle when he was trying to run down the road. Like, what the hell's wrong with this guy? The only thing I do agree is that Sonic liked Keanu Reeves honestly <laughs> um but they didn't even know what sonic was supposed to look like i mentioned that um jim carrey's character didn't even fit in there at all as dr robotnik it looks like they took him right from batman as the riddler and stuck him in an entirely different movie i just didn't think that he fit entirely in there he had no motivation he wasn't fat what was his motivation he said he wanted to study sonic but then ends up trying to kill him the entire movie Sonic also promotes divorce. I wanted to put that in there. <laughs> well, as a Christian. <laughs> um, I'm not for that. Sonic, Sonic flosses in the movie? What the hell is that? Oh, Christ. Um, Should have never happened. The jokes are cheesy where um, the cop, whatever his name is, who was act in the X-Men movies, goes, at least you're not going to be the Hi. only fun guy. Hey, Keith, guess what? Yeah. That's a great round. <laughs> Guess what, Joe? Guess what, Chris? Uh, it's question and answer time. Round three. Chris's favorite round. You want to start? Or um, I start? I'm going to start. Um, I'm going to start with Keith. Um, now, you said, and this is something also that AJ brought up, so I'm going to ask Keith this question first because he was the last one to speak, and then I'm going to ask AJ. Does a movie based on a video game need to be story beat for beat just like the video game? Not necessarily. I don't think it needs to be beat for beat, but I think it's nice when it does follow a good path alongside the games and have a lot of the same content. Similarly, where you're like, oh yeah, I remember that. I recognize that from the games, like Easter eggs, things like that. I think that really make the experience where you can relate it to what the game's vibe and overall feeling of it is. Okay. Now um, to AJ, same question. <laughs> However, um, you brought, uh, I want to add uh, an addendum to the question I asked Keith, which was you said the fact that Sonic was brought out of the game and then introduced into the real world made mm. a more interesting movie. Um, do you care to elaborate on that based off what yeah. Keith said, where people want, they know the game, they want to see the game in movie form. Do you think it's better to pull a character out of the game and, and give them a totally different storyline than the game? 
So uh, it could work either way, right? However, it's been noted time and time again, when you actually try to do the video game movie, it, it kind of bombs, right? Like, which is why to choose a good video game movie is rather difficult. So the reason why it worked with Sonic is to, to Keith's point, does it have to be in the video game? Not really to make a good movie, but it, it actually has to, it, act, it has to follow some certain beats in order to actually be a decent movie to keep everybody's attention, which Sonic did. So they went for the buddy, but you know, like the buddy cop kind of a vibe right so the, the the travel buddy kind of vibe right they also had references to the video game throughout the entire movie he picks up a turtle in the video games he saves the uh lives of the uh of the animals throughout the video game franchise you can uh the rings actually save his life right by teleporting him to all these different worlds uh on one of the maps you actually see a saturn world which is a reference to sega uh, sega saturn uh you see dr robotnik turn you know the reason why he's called eggman is because sonic gives all these dopey names to everybody and eggman was one of the names that was given to jim carrey so so to actually see him be brought instead of being played in the video game but brought to the real world with like more of a what traditional movie would be to play it on the safe side instead of trying to be oh let's make a video game character and whatever else i think that they actually absolutely nailed it because for a lot of movies the travel buddy movie is one of the most iconic movies the uh types road trip movie yeah thank you thank you <laughs> let me ask aj a question do you think it was lazy storytelling to pull Sonic into a buddy road trip story opposed to what they're doing with the Mario movie with uh, Universal being basically creating their own universe and putting Mario in his own like world and everything? Do you think it's lazy being like... Are you, are you talking about the Mario movie that got made? No, they're making one. Oh, I didn't what? know that. The, oh, yeah, the one that's going to be made by Illumination? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Do you think um, it's lazy them doing kind of the Alvin and the Chipmunks thing, the fucking mm. uh, Smurfs thing, throwing them into a real world thing, and they might have just got lucky striking like maybe bronze with this movie, being like it's pretty good. They did a good job, but do you think it would have been could have been better if they actually tried to focus on like the source material opposed to going we need star power, we need to be able to bring these live action people in there and make it like a kids movie. Mm -hmm. uh, is it lazy writing? I would, I would say yes. I would agree with you to say yes. Um, the way that they had uh, actually, you know, put everything together was more what I would consider safe. Uh, so not anything that they're trying to do because when it comes to video game movies, again, like uh, let's go with Doom, right? So they were trying to go, you know, fixate on the which is a terrible movie I, yeah, well, nobody, <laughs> if you disagree with it it's god awful movie. but it's you know points. So, so they try <laughs> so they try to make that more towards you know like the video game but take their you know put their take on it right so i would say that is it lazy writing yes i would argue safe because again you're going with a genre that is tried and true uh of a you know travel movie and you have you have everything that you need you have um, the guy who's chasing you, you have the reason for the travel, and then you have the conclusion, which is, again, that's the formulaic uh, route that you go for uh, what, again, has been proven time and time and time again to be a good, if not successful movie. And that lies in between there. Could they have done something more action packed and a little bit more grandiose? Absolutely. But I would also argue that had they done that with their original way of doing it, they might have flopped. So they actually listened to the fans. They didn't go with Scary Sonic. Uh, and they decided to kind of go more down, again, what I would say more of a safe route. Okay. Um, this goes to Keith. Uh, does a video game movie where the video game character is brought into the real world, is that still considered a video game movie? because you're taking the character out of the video mm. game. So sure you're using the character, but is the video game still a video game movie? How do you feel on that? Keith? I would say it can be very hit or miss. Um, like, I think it can be done really well and it could be done really bad. I think with Sonic, I think the, the bad parts about that is yes, you have Sonic in the real world, right? but don't talk so much about I, I want your like oh just like in general yeah in general okay so i mean yeah like i i think you could bring the character into the real world but you also don't have the environments and things like that to back it up and the world 
and the lore and all that stuff to back it up. You just have the character and not everything else that comes along that, with it and the experience. Well, I want to ask the exact same question to AJ. Does pulling a video game character out of the video game, you fucking idiot, then making it, um, fuck, making it, uh, 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 sorry, Dad. You, you know what I'm trying to say. Same question, same question is what I mean, AJ. Sorry. <laughs> Um, does it so, so does pulling a video game character out of the actual video game he's from still consider a video game movie? Yeah, and just making a, right. a, a solo plot, but just use, using the character like in a borrowed IP, is it still a video game movie? Yes. Okay. All so right. do you want my reasoning behind it? Yes, I would like your reasoning behind it. Okay, so if you're so you're talking about the actual characters themselves, right? So we're going based off of a, of a video game, which is in and of itself trying to be realistic in their dimension. So if you're going to be taking uh, a character from a franchise, uh, like let's say um, mm -hmm. Master Chief from Halo, right? So that's still going to be a video game movie because you're now taking Master Chief, who's supposed to be real in his time, or in, in rather in his kind of uh, IP, and you're bringing him into our world, right? So either which way, you're dealing with a sense of, you know, what reality is. So their reality is reality. Our reality is reality. So if you're going to be bringing a video game character whose reality is reality, how is it not a video game movie? All right. Same. I'm going to ask Keith first on this, then I'll ask you. Do you think the way they made the Sonic movie is a cheap representation of a video game movie, opposed to Ratchet and Clank, where they actually regardless of the movies good or bad tried to make a true to life like actual video game movie based on the source material mm. or do you think they should go more of the route where like we're going to make our own story and it doesn't matter if it's involved in necessarily the world do you think it should be the way it was made or do you think they should strictly go based on the source material so i think what you're trying to say is should a video game movie be one to one of the video game's plot or should it be it or should it be wholly original? Yeah. Does it basically make it a video game movie like he was saying? Like or? I was saying. I think we've asked the same question three times. No, it's, <laughs> but, it's um, Do you think it's fair to consider a great video game movie if it's not based on the source material? That's a good one. Yeah. And I know Sonic is kind of a, a cut and dry like it's, story, but it's there. You could adapt something with it, with him going against would, Eggman and all would, that. Would you play right. a video game of the Sonic movie? No. Well, no, I'm not asking no, no, you. No, no, no. <laughs> but okay, much, is that what you're asking me? The concept, like, would you rather play a video game based on the Sonic movie or based on the Ratchet and Clank movie? Like, what do you think fans expect more out of? I think, I mean, just in the past, I think what a lot of people have wanted from a video game movie is to follow more of the source material and and have more of it follow sort of a one-to-one -one. doesn't have to be exactly one-to-one -one. obviously if somebody played the game they don't want to see exact like aj mentioned you don't want to see all of the same exact beats but i think it should definitely follow the source material seeing those characters in that world and that same like graphics animation and all that kind of stuff definitely makes it a better video game versus having this character thrown into a real world sort of situation that he doesn't really belong in what about you, AJ? Can we phrase the question again? <laughs> um, so, so if 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 Sonic didn't exist and they were making a movie based off the or they were making a game based off the Sonic movie, would it right. would it be more entertaining than a game based off the Ratchet and Clank movie? So I would say, so, all right. So what I want to, so basically put, would I want to play a video game movie based off of this? Would I want to play a video game based off the Sonic movie? Probably not. No. However, I'm not playing, you know, we're talking about an actual movie. I don't want to play a video game based on, you know, vacation with, uh, you know, with what's his face in right. the 80s. That sounds like a terrible movie also. Uh, that sounds that sounds like a terrible video game. I don't care about, you know, vacation, you know, Christmas vacation. That's, I agree. That's I agree. Good. You know, so right there and of itself, we're talking about two different mediums that, you know, sometimes they can go together, sometimes they can't, you know, again, so do I want to play a video game based off of the Grinch? No, I don't, because it's just got awful. You're stealing Christmas and you're a big grumpy man. Who wants that? So it, I could be good. 
I, I, maybe you could. Maybe you could. I like my I like my, my idea of vacation better. I'm going to stick with yeah. that one. So, <laughs> but you know, so it, it Shush, might have funny no, parts in it. Stop, stop, stop. But it might have funny parts in it to make it a good movie, which is why people like going back to it. But is it going to make a good video game? No, because again, not all good movies make good video games, and again, not all good video games make good movies, which is why we're kind of like you know, uh, in an in between right now as to what is a good video game movie. Okay. I have one final question. I have one after him. <laughs> okay. I have one more question. Um, now, AJ, early in your argument, you said that um, because the Sonic movie did well at the box office, it's a good movie. Um, do you think that uh, amount of money made equates to a good movie? And if so, do you think the fact that Sonic came out during COVID and uh, the movie theaters being shut down and limited options, do you think that added to the fact that people saw the Sonic movie? No. Uh, so, uh, so with respect, right? So Sonic actually came out before the lockdowns and everything else. So the uh, movie theaters were I still- it didn't. No. no, it came out a little bit before, but then the lockdowns happened. So oh, it yeah. ended up hurting right. the Sonic box office. Oh, it yeah. hurt it. Okay, so See, I thought it got delayed due to COVID. No, right. so I it, was just misremembering. That's my no, it's, no, it's so because it actually, of the ugly face design. That's it, that's exactly <laughs> it. It got delayed six months because of Scary Sonic. So they actually delayed it six months into February of I think it was Valentine's Day weekend. So it actually came out yeah. before the shit hit the fan. So did it actually hinder it? No, not at all. They made again like their opening weekend. They made over fifty. They made over fifty million dollars in the opening weekend. Weekend. and again this was right. before anything but 50 shades of gray is considered a box office success but it's right. a horrible it's a terrible movie, movie. it's so, a horrible movie right guess, so then i guess what i'm trying to argue is like just because it made money does that mean it's a good movie i don't know like so you're right so there's a lot and, and that's an argument to be made by a lot of other movies right so there's a lot of other in, in which in that regard it could become a little on the subjective side because you have more fans of sonic who were more excited to go see sonic than you had ratchet and clank fans to go see ratchet and clank right which is why they had absolutely abysmal numbers and they actually were they lost money on the whole entire movie right so you have so does it actually objectively make it a better movie i would argue I, I would agree with you does it objectively make it no however there are a lot more people who were more excited to see sonic there are a lot more reviews out there that i've seen than i've read where people are either meh lukewarm about it or saying that this is a good movie All right. not i haven't read too many uh too many reviews about ratchet and clank where they're now, like oh my god i love i'm gonna movie. i'm gonna ask uh, the same question but in the opposite to keith do huh? you feel that because that even though Ratchet and Clank didn't make gangbusters, that it, it that that doesn't matter. It's still a great movie. Um, no, I would I would totally disagree with that because I mean we look at movies like the original Blade Runner. That movie did absolutely fucking terrible in the theaters, and that movie is a cult classic now. Um, and the same thing with the new Blade Runner movie. That movie didn't do that great, and then people watched it afterwards and were like, "Wow, this movie is actually really great." So I don't think the box office numbers really matter in a sense, because you could also look at the numbers of Sonic and be like, oh, the numbers are really big because yeah, a lot of people do know about Sonic. He's been around a lot longer and people are probably like, oh yeah, I love Sonic. I'm definitely gonna go see this movie to see if it's even good, whether they knew it before or not. So no, I don't think that the numbers necessarily matter because movies can be good or not so good. All right, this is legit the final question. All right, I'm going to pee while you do that. <laughs> Out of all the fans between Sonic so and Ratchet and Clank... Which fan base is more autistic? <laughs> which fan base do you think enjoyed the movie more? Now, I'm not talking about, like, both of them enjoying it. I'm saying, which Sonic base fan base do you think enjoyed that convinced uh, the most uh, Ratchet and Clank fan base? If that makes sense. You get what I'm saying? I think so. Like, I mean, whether it's younger kids do you think or older. The Ratchet and Clank fan base enjoyed the movie more than the Sonic fan base enjoyed uh, the Sonic movie. I I would say so. AJ, and, you can go first. Me or you want Keith? <laughs> You're already talking. I just, yeah, okay. <laughs> my bad. Yeah, I, I'm good. just very opinionated. So, so I I would say that that might be something that you know 
again, from everything that I've seen online is uh, all the reviews of people who wanted to speak their opinion, you know, it's either lukewarm to good, right? I, I haven't really seen too many reviews where not too many people uh, liked it. Not to say that they're not out there, you know, people dislike the movie, you know, sure. Um, but I would say that to really have to talk to that many people to really get their interest and also between the gap in between there it's you would have to kind of go more towards the numbers enjoyably i mean again you'd have to look at the reviews from what i've seen son you know people who actually watched the sonic movie were either you know pleasantly surprised and thought it was okay to good whereas from the reviews i saw from ratchet and clank were you know from okay to meh hey what about you keith ow um <laughs> Jesus. Um, so I just, yeah, I'm just trying to think of how to word this. Uh, Don't say anything anti-Semitic. <laughs> I wasn't planning on it, but, <laughs> but now that you're telling me not to, I feel like I should. <laughs> I, I, word it. I was giving him advice. Um, Life advice. <laughs> yeah. So I don't, I don't know. It's, it's hard to say, I guess, like, so I'm just trying to understand the question still. Yeah, it's a bad question. Do you think, <laughs> no, do you think fans of the video game like your movie more? What you're than saying like is, do Sonic, Sonic fans like it more than Ratchet and Clank fans? That's retarded. <laughs> That's a bad question. It's not. It's a movie. So you think fans? fans. So what you're saying is, do, do you think? Do I think that fans of each individual more, game do like the movie? Uh, what's it called? Which though? was more fan received, Sonic or Ratchet and Clank? Is that what you're trying to say? Sort of, yeah. So, <laughs> question. I don't know. I mean, I would say I would say that, um, just for sake of argument, I would just say that you know I think the fans of Ratchet and Clank would like, you know, the Ratchet and Clank movie more because it follows more of the the guidelines of making you know a video game movie within the same universe and the same music, sound effects you know voice actors and all that stuff it makes a complete thing versus so it's more respectful to the original fan base right. the original game that's that what should made. have been your question well i yeah. just thought of it now and aj aj got it he's trying to find it <laughs> okay uh so we're done with the question round now that chad fucking I mean, nuked it from orbit i'm gonna keep the point there <laughs> um okay Guess what? Now it's time for round four. What's round four? Closing arguments? Round four is when they get to go head to head. Oh, all right. Oh, yeah. Free dialogue. And you guys get to argue to each other while you're just better. Mm. And you have three minutes starting now. All right, Keith, I'm going to allow you to go first and tell me why Sonic <laughs> is amazing. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So first of all, as I said, you have the same exact voice actors to play the exact same personas that we love and know about Ratchet and Clank. Boring. Like, Move on. <laughs> we have the same exact names of the weapons, the same exact aesthetic. I mean, we have the same comedy. Um, I mean, you have Captain Quark, which is like the dumbass ranger that's trying to save the world, but Ratchet and Clank are just like, no, we're going to take over and we're going to try and we're going to save the Yeah, but do you have Sanic? Do you have Sanic? Do you have real life memes? I do not believe so. We have Sanic, my dude. We have a guy who actually drew Sanic the Hedgehog. And that is also a point right there. He made him extremely ugly and had to fix him. And exactly, even, but you're also saying that you're afterwards. making it like you know that was the last detail though. They think did they or did they not fix him? Did they listen to the fans? Although, and albeit they did it because they needed the money, but did they fix him? Yes, they yes, did. They did. So, fix and him. that's why. The, so, I wouldn't have seen the movie had they not fixed him, but they did. So, I saw the movie and I enjoyed it. So, that is an irrelevant argument. That okay, but I have to ugly. say, I have to say, um, they named the area in Montana. First of all, Montana is the worst fucking state in the United well, States. That has nothing to do with the video game. Let's move on. <laughs> uh, actually, it does because they named it Green Hill Zone, which looks exactly nothing like Green Hill Zone in the Wrong. Sonic they game. They named it Green Hills. They actually had the opening stage in Green Hill Zone, which had the loop de loop, which is a callback to the sonic video games which is also one of the many and callbacks that they had then they had. never had any of that section in the entire movie for the entire in time in the introduction how, and they use the, the they use also use all of the rings as portals which is bullshit because only the big rings which are seldomly found in each of the individual sonic levels are used as portals and how do you get to the big rings they did they not turn into the big rings that's how no, they, they fit to the portals 
That's not true. All what do you mean that's not true? Yes, it is. All of the rings that they he collects, one of the, they all the rings one that of the he collects rings. in the levels are only points, which are like 2,100 points per ring. But are they big rings where they go through? Nope. He finds them in an what item do you mean, chest. No. Yes, they are. They're big rings. They're where they go through. They, they're not like little tiny rings. They're not little no, donut the, size. They're actually, there are uh, the big rings, but he finds those in a chest. He didn't carry them in his sack of rings. I'm sure everyone's <laughs> rings are big. Now, also, new subject, so you, new subject. you want to talk about Iconic, though. You also have the Echidna who were chasing down Sonic in the beginning. So not only does that a plot point that's going to be going into another True. movie, that also kind of gives you more of an origin story on, uh, on Knuckles. You also have the origin story of Dr. Eggman, who's also Dr. Robotnik. No, which was have also a, a bad choice to choose crazy. Jim Carrey. because uh, he doesn't... You are out of your mind because <laughs> Eggman is eccentric. Jim Carrey is eccentric as fuck. Yes. So you cannot Jim Carrey get is any a good better actor, but that. he's playing you the same exact actor that he played all... as in Batman and every other Jim Carrey movie. Uh, and everybody before. loves him for it. And you don't think that he actually brought that character to I don't life? Think, get the nope. hell out of here. He fits you entirely have... in the wrong Time! movie. Jesus. <laughs> um, I have one more question, though. Um, this goes to Are AJ. Are we allowed to do this? Yeah. I, this is just, which of the Sonic's babes is the hottest? God damn it. <laughs> now, are we talking video games or are we talking i'm talking the up teal 98 bro which suck <laughs> all right this is gonna be one of those things where we don't need to really factor in the math with this no this is are we dead even <gasps> wow okay i i'll go first i gave aj eight points you were very articulate. You were very well spoken. Um, you, I tried to set questions up to make you fall, and you fucking beat me. Uh, I, I tried to, I gave you questions to pump you up, and you fucking, you ran with them. Same goes to Keith. Keith, you got eight points. You answered every attack question correctly and every puff piece question correctly. Uh, you guys both brought up good points, which had me erasing and adding, erasing and adding as I was going on. <laughs> Again, tie. Tie between the both of you from my end. On my end, AJ, you had nine points. Whoa. I like the enthusiasm. <laughs> I, I honestly like how you explained why you thought your Sonic was there. But at the end, Keither had 11 points. What? Why? Whoa. Why did Keith get 11? Keith had 11 because I feel like he described why his movie was more adaptable to video game fans and why he thought he pretty much bashed on the Sonic movie enough and did a bunch of stuff. I think AJ went harder against the Ratchet and Clank movie than Keith went harder against the Sonic movie. <laughs> yeah, but Keith talked his movie up a lot more. So did AJ. Okay. Um... <laughs> At the end of the day, the two persons. Do you guys get to go against each other now? <laughs> right. Do we debate now? Um, Point of I, contention. I mean, like, to the death. <laughs> AJ was winning for the majority of this debate. But uh, I think Keith, Keith honestly pulled it out at the end. Yeah, you turned it on at the end, Keith, and you got three points in the last round. Uh, not the last round, the, the Q&A. Um, in the last round, you got an extra point on me, which kind of made you go way ahead. Yeah, I, I wasn't doing that. It was because of the mustache. Um, <laughs> oh, bias. <laughs> A little bit. AJ, I love you. AJ, I <laughs> when this whole tournament's over, I want to debate AJ. You can, maybe. I, I'm 0-2. Why would you want to debate me? <laughs> because I feel like I feel like one of the judges is biased. I'm not biased. <laughs> I've known AJ way longer. It doesn't matter. I feel like AJ and me arguing on a subject because we're both very animated speakers. But hey, guess what? Keith. Yeah, you you get out of loser's bracket, man. Woo-woo! I won. You're one and one, bro. Nice. AJ, Sorry, AJ. Great. I still love you. All right. I love you guys, too. AJ, <laughs> you were winning again. AJ, you were winning up until the very end again. Like, Wait, do, but, we get, do we get to do our elevator pitch? No, oh, that's, need to. that's overtime, bro. Oh, okay. You man, I had it. a really good elevator pitch, too. <laughs> I really did, man. <laughs> well, you got to pull the elevator pitch out in your final debate. Then your opening statement should be your elevator pitch. Oh, elevator pitch is your last resort, bro. That's true. But guess what? You won. 
I know. This has I been still wanted to do the elevator pitch, yeah, so I thought I thought it was going to be funny really and sad. epic. <laughs> AJ, let us know where you're from and where we can find you. I am from Long Island. You can find me in New York. But... So, what's the address in the comments. Yeah, what's your social security number? Oh, that's one one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, so I am all up from allforgamers.com. I put up uh, video game uh, news on there weekly. I slacked last week. This Friday we'll have an article there. Instagram is all for gamers. I have a Twitch, uh, which is twitch.tv slash A4GZ. YouTube is all for gamers where I put up my Let's Plays. And I have an online store that you can find by following our Instagram handle and uh, going online. You know, uh, I have two magnificent people who actually just uh, put orders in and their orders should be coming very soon. One of my, them's here. My, my cats bought them. <laughs> <laughs> Keith, what about you, bro? Um, you can find me on um, Instagram at digital underscore denizens and Facebook at digital denizens. And we also got the digital, digital denizens podcast, which is on Spotify, um, Anchor, Apple, Overcast, Google Podcast, all the platforms, and on YouTube. Now, um, we also got the content creation corner, which is our interview uh, episodes that we just started kind of separating from the you podcast. Need to get us both on there. Yeah, I'm totally down for that. Yeah, and then, maybe we and can film that after this. Yeah. And maybe then I'm working on actually putting out an episode probably tomorrow for uh, which I had Leslie's daughter on, which is our new segment that we're doing once a month, which is called Next Gen. Don't forget to look up the channels. It's going to be the links in the bio. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let us yeah. know what topics you want to see next on the great nerd debate don't forget to like and subscribe thanks for watching yeah. <laughs> it's, be its own solo video called keith's elevator pitch <laughs> he wasn't satisfied satisfied no, don't even money. don't even drum it up just go just start ready yes <laughs> one lombax one reject robot one mission to save the Solana and the Gal Galactic Rangers and the galaxy from the clutches of the Chairman Drek from impending doom and the deep planetizer. Non-stop sci-fi action packed adventure across a wide spanning galaxy. Ridiculously named weapons and gadgets that cause ridiculous amounts of damage. Critically acclaimed soundtrack brought to you by Insomniac Games and animation. Guaranteed. AJ, you would have lost. AJ, you would have lost. <laughs> Hold on, I'm not is this an elevator pitch or a trailer? What the fuck? Dude, is it on? doesn't matter. If I was in the elevator and a guy started doing this, I'd be like, "I'm whatever you. I'm on board. Like this is awesome." <laughs> Plus, anyways, what do you mean would have lost? I did lose, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> you won in my eyes, AJ. <laughs> I appreciate you. <laughs> 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 Listen, just because he had an amazing elevator pitch, you would have lost. I fucking lost anyway. So <laughs> if you guys were tied, you would have lost. Oh, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> Dude.